three, two, one. Jazz hands. <laughs> oh, the weirdness that is this thing. <laughs> I'm devastated about that chair position last week and that I didn't fully commit to the dive as I went backwards. I think it would have been more dramatic. Yeah. We had a viral moment <laughs> ruined by a chair. Yeah. Now my brain is completely always thinking that there's some AI tool that can fix a problem I have. Mm. And that was the first thing I thought of. It's like, AI, remove the chair so we can see Gem. <laughs> have you been playing with new AI tools? This week, what's the latest in Software Corner with Justin? <laughs> well, <laughs> you can either fast forward this part if you've heard it endlessly, or if you're new to it, the thing that I was playing with this week was called ChatGPT, which is probably about a week or 10 days old now in the world, and at least to my knowledge, and it's... Have you played with it at all? Nope, I'm new to it. Made by OpenAI, which is the same company that makes Dolly. The okay. thing we played with forever and it's primarily a language based i'm not going to act like i understand what this all is but you can type into it and it will respond kind of like some of those ai devices that say like your amazon device or your siri device except for that mm. it's really good like really good yeah right. so you can say like first thing i had to do is try and make me an nda happened in seconds writes it on the page for you. <laughs> you can say like, no, actually, you know, make the disclosure Portland CNC and the recipient I like butter with this, uh, this address. And then like it does that. And then you can say yeah. like, no, actually put it in the style of Shakespeare. And it does that. Like it would change all the mm -hmm. language basically within seconds. And it's all like easily copy and pasteable. The other so have you done anything useful with it? Mm. <laughs> Because it genuinely helped you. Yes. I have had it write draft emails for me. Like, I need cool. to respond and plan this thing to this person in a business tone. And so, basically, you can write, like, a short sentence and it will do it. And I think instead of it just spitting something out that's, like, kind of kind of useful, what's so amazing is then the, the contextual awareness to then be able to reply, like, a chat and say, no, mm. that's not right, change this detail. One thing I've been needing to do and wanting to do is make a in-person training course here at our location. And uh, part of it's just, I need to run through and make a syllabus and like an outline of what we're gonna do so I can start to flesh that out. And I, I just yeah. kind of been sticking, like I haven't been able to like sit down and do that. Mm. So I said, you know, write me this syllabus. And it did it. No problem. It's not as it's not probably what I would go with completely, but it's a starting place. It's like it it yeah. cures the blank page. Amazing. Yeah, it's been all over TikTok yeah. this last week, as you know. Yep. And I think the only examples that I've seen where I've been like, ooh, if I hadn't been stupidly busy, I would have gone off and had a play with it, were like, write me a you know, yeah, just like building that structure of a plan. That's what's attracted to me, like just fleshing mm -hmm. out a simple planning structure of a social media strategy or like yep. posting oh, yeah. ideas or copywriting is stuff. killer. Like I was sending you some on Slack when I was playing with it for the first time. And I think I made a song about like butter in the style That's... of like some old Songs classic rock song. I forget. And oh, it's about Gem and the Robots in the style of. Yeah. God, what was that? That's was... It's pretty entertaining. Benny, Benny and the Benny Jets. Benny and the Jets. <laughs> Jimmy and the bots, they're a sight to see with their dot 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 with their special brand of funk and leave the misfits feeling like a bunch of duds. Benny and the Jets, they've got nothing on Jim. She's the leader of the pack and she knows how to win. Ground. They'll use their skills and their wits to keep the world safe from the misfits. It was definitely <laughs> channeling Jim and the holograms. Yeah. With a heart of gold and a will of steel, Jimmy and the bots, they always make a deal to protect the world and the people they love. Jim and the robots, they rise above. Uh -huh. Yeah, cool. Uh, we've been playing around with the idea of doing free shipping to Australia because we have a decent amount of people that buy yeah. there from your exposure and shipping is expensive there that experiment can we incentivize some you know sales basically by having a sale on shipping i asked chat D gpt to write me liquid code for shopify to make an announcement banner that only shows to australian customers and it wrote liquid code and like 
used a, a format of filtering that didn't quite work, but it it gave me like if user country equals Australia, then which like you'd have to be a user. So I was like, no, use IP addresses. It did that. Yeah. But they weren't mm. the right IP addresses. <laughs> so like sure, it yeah, was yeah. close. It, it gave me all the framework. So then all I had to do was potentially drop in IP address ranges if I could figure that out. Yeah. yeah. That kind of stuff's just like that would have taken me like a full day of messing around to try and get that close to mm. it, I think. Half a day. Yeah, it's pretty super cool. I'll check that. We are experiencing exceptionally high demand. <laughs> yes. <laughs> really? I wonder why. To be honest, like everybody's saying it's going to change the world, but in my thinking and using it, I've been sending Ricky Slack messages of like, here, look at this thing it can do. And we just, you know, it's entertaining. But then I started to think like, no, he needs to be using this. Mm. I actually think it's that useful that it's free We've been emailing with Prusa, right? And I was like, let's go back and forth with Prusa, you know, in the chat thing and just say like, hey, you know, I, I mocked up that scenario and like, because he's been writing back and forth to them. I'm like, look at what it can do, you know? And mm. so then I was like, no, there's no reason to be writing all this text out if it can do it for you just as well in yeah, a quarter of the yeah, time. Maybe. So I was like, just try it. Oh, see what it's like. Hold the phone. Do you want to press record? <laughs> I do. Good call. So now we are live. Now, oh, man. Software preamble, at least. What's new with you? Mm, I'm very tired. I might have slept at work one night this week. How was that experience? Do you have a bed there? I do, actually. Yeah. It's not permanently set up, but upstairs in Laura's studio, we've got I like a little cage. You had the studio there. Caged off area. Yeah, Laura's sculpture studio is directly above me and we've got a little caged off corner where we pen the children in sometimes it's got carpet and a couch that's legal to say in and america but you can say it as you like there <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, nice so i was i was finishing this job and it was like 1 a.m and i was planning to get up again at five so i was like i could get more sleep if i didn't drive home right now yeah so i crashed so yeah it's been one of those weeks and I'm that sucks. Burning the candle on both ends, which is good. You know, it's been fun too. Like I got two mornings to myself, just out on site installing this job. Yeah, I saw so that. It's fun and yeah. So I've had quite a bit of time on the tools and quite a bit of late night time on the machines. So I've been having fun. It's not great, but you know, enjoying it while it's, it's there. Inter interesting you bring that up because one of the thoughts. I was going to ask you, do you find the holidays to be a stressor for business? Yep. Yeah, me too. Trying to change my way, something about it. It's very hard to avoid the kind of the pitfall of the holiday crunch. Yeah. Something, yeah. It's just, I guess we've kind of trained ourselves for that, like, ramp up. Um, and it's, it's hard to sort of, yeah, everyone's got expectations around it. There's this yep. sort of false sense of, yeah, we've got to get it done before Christmas. Yeah. Even if we're only closing for a week. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Like this doesn't, ha like the only other holiday that's kind of similar is like Easter here. Oh, really? And, you know, we don't close for as long at Easter, but it's still often a long weekend. Best part of a week, maybe. But it's just, yeah, it's a completely different mindset. It's like, just keep rolling along. There's not that sort of end sense of an end point so yeah i'd really like to get away from get away from it i was kind of brought to i think a couple of years ago when i first started working with the fusion mostly the nesting team and i remember usually multiple of them we'd have these bi-weekly calls and it happened this morning and they're just showing me new stuff and like asking for feedback and we know each other pretty well and it's like yeah, I won't talk to you until next year. And I was like, God. Yeah, not only is it like that time of the year, but like they do a thing where they just stop work on like mm. the end of this week and don't start till January 3rd. Because, I mean, yeah. it completely makes sense. Like it is, yeah, you know, like if your company can afford that, like their revenue isn't stopping, first of all, yep. you know, they, they don't need to be making widgets. But, but... Like, even if you are making widgets, like, my 
goal, I think, like you're saying, moving like in the place and time when we can afford that would be something similar, like pay for a, you know, vacation time for your employees for that period of time when they can mm. not be stressed. I'm like, sure, you got to get stuff done before that potentially, but it's such a chaotic time of year to like try to work while everybody else is taking time off in America anyway. Like, like then people yeah. don't answer, they don't deliver. It's like, I don't know. Why do we do this? Like, why, why don't we follow like whatever the Europeans are probably doing? I'm sure, you know, since 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> drinking blue wine and partying in the streets no look i'm a bit torn like the sort of all the business training i've been doing is sort of speaks to consistency and discipline mm. and just like not getting caught up in like the head trash of oh my god we have to get it done before christmas and just like just treat it like a normal month but at the same time, I remember, like, we used to take all of January off. Like, we used to basically close. There's a bit of a thing in Australia where trade-based businesses hmm. often have an extended break in oh. early to mid, sometimes even beyond in January. And I think that's changing a bit culturally. But, yeah, we used to down tools for almost a whole month. Wow. Like, and that was, you know, a long time ago now. But, uh, yeah, the, 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 I so miss that. Like, I don't particularly enjoy the heat of summer, so it's not my favourite time of year to take time off. But that was, yeah, it was a nice thing to sort of switch off for that period of time. That's really interesting, like, from my cultural point of view, because summer is, like, the time to be doing trade work or construction, typically. Mm. And I can't imagine yeah, exactly. that happening here. Like, it would be the opposite, I think, where people would take off a month in the winter because there's nothing to do, like, you know, on a site or something. Or well, you Interesting. get snow, right? You have different yeah. winters. Yeah, it's usually cold-related winter-wise here. And, and, well, whenever your winter is, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it's been a crazy week, but it's been some fun stuff going on. We've been really hit by lots of technical difficulties lately. So yeah. we obviously had that issue with the pencil sharpener ball screw, which thankfully is back online now. But we've just been plagued by other little things like multiple pencil sharpeners crashing a lot this week for mm. various reasons, some of which we couldn't diagnose fully. Yeah. Head crashes on Trinity. Yeah, just lots of little gremlins. Spray booth has been clogging up and not working very well. And I was kind of reflecting on it last night. I was like, it feels like there's like this little perfect storm of technical issues right now. And the, the weirdest one was John and I were problem solving a homing issue on the pencil sharpener yesterday. And we just couldn't work out why it would home sometimes and not at other moments. And we fiddled, 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 and then finally worked out that the homing sensors are optical. Oh. And then I was standing there dirty. and I was kind of, I was looking up. Oh, yeah, I was like, maybe they're just dirty. And then I was kind of looking at the sun, like, blaring through the skylight. So I was like, I wonder if it just needs a hat. <laughs> and, like, I put a little bit of masking tape over the optical sensor just oh, to put wow. it in shade. And it worked. Wow. So to just... The lighting conditions were such that it was wigging out this sensor. And maybe the sensor's dying and it's on its way out. I really need to order some backup sensors so I've got them on hand. But An umbrella weird. on top of it. Yeah, I think my pencil sharp needs a sombrero. I think you could print that. <laughs> That's part of the UR um, robot's job is it's got to put the sombrero on every day. Mm, yeah. I know what you mean. I don't want this to just be like a bitching session necessarily, but <laughs> I feel like since months ago, it's like I feel like I haven't had a reprieve of some constant weird problem every week or every, I feel lately like every two to three days I have what feels like a crisis happening and mm. it's just been really heavy. Like I've, I'm trying to figure out how to like back out of that feeling constantly and like expecting it to happen now which is even worse you know but the thing the, the problem du jour is the tool forks that we thought were dialed and great yeah that's one one handful 
another so handful. Sanity, putting them in the van. Another hand, like it took me over a week, roughly a week. Like I thought, that, like it held up our install and and my uh, mm. customer last week, and we're gonna do that this week. We're still currently making them between machine weirdness that could be tram that we're gonna get into, but I don't think it's necessarily that still, and like parts not fitting right in the fixture, so then they're getting machined too small in the channel in the center to like. Yeah, right. Just literally like CAD to like expectations of what it's going to be. It's just like every possible thing feels like it, it keeps going wrong. And I mean, really digs into you. It makes me feel like I'm making all the wrong decisions. And that's not yeah, really a thing I've yeah. experienced a whole lot in the last couple of years. You know, like you feel like you get better at those things, like decisions on process and uh, and cat like cat expectations for what it comes out to in like a tolerance sense like you feel like i feel like i've gotten pretty good at that and it's like a couple times in the last two weeks it's been like i'm a i'm what three four or five millimeters off of what i thought it would be like it's like what mm. what is happening to me i don't know i mean you could on the upside you could argue that you're pushing yourself like into mm-hmm. new territory, making new products. Yeah, true. In and as part of pushing yourself, you're going to make more mistakes. Mm. Yeah, that's true. But I know what you mean about that compound factor <laughs> getting yeah. to you can be disconcerting. All right. Yeah. So have you got new forks on the way now? Rookie on route, has got so the fixture made. One of the f- factors we're changing, which we almost never do this but i decided to take out another potential error issue we usually make a lot of fixtures out of like plywood like you know bamboo yep. or not bamboo but baltic birch bamboo I'm plywood missed. and it's just not accurate enough i don't think for something we want to make really repeatable so we had a uh-huh. piece of acetal that we are machining mm. we finished machining i think we gotta maybe dial it in for fit but it's now going to be an cool. acetal fixture for acetal parts, which I don't I feel like there could be a weirdness to that, but I know it's going to be a lot more accurate than the plywood no, stuff because that, that, that can change over time pretty pretty consistently. Yeah. Um, so that's theoretically done. And then we'll throw parts into it. And it is one of the more tricky parts to set up cam for. There's probably 20 operations on one side. Just little tiny movements, trying to get the, all those channels right, and so hopefully that goes smooth cool. today. <laughs> yeah, awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Good luck. Mm-hmm. What was the issue? What did you find with the tramming situation? I've not solved it. That's after we make these parts, which is probably the wrong okay. choice. But I just I feel confident enough that it's not going to affect the quality of the parts. In this case, that's going to be the next step is talking to Shop Saver about how to tram because we've never done that. But I did get that stupid simple tools tram tool. It's like two indicators on a on an arm, and it's a cool you, looking thing. Yeah, you spin it around. Juan there contacted me about sending one, and I'll make a little post about using it. I think Sweet. there's a lot of people that do do this for Shop Sabers, and there's no real videos on it. So what what's its rated RPM? How quick can you get it? First thing I did was turn the VFD off. <laughs> I'd say maybe maybe 30. I think our other news is in thinking about and playing with this model on my desk, I pre-ordered mm. one of those bamboo X1Cs yeah. because Ooh. it's just too promising to ignore or how many... Like, we still have no solution on the Prusa even after four more emails back and forth with them. They have no solid suggestions on how to fix it. It does mm. print like PLA just fine. It's like seemingly very specifically the higher temp of PETG. It's something that's happening while printing dust boots. We've given them our code and they're like, we don't see any problems with that. We've sent videos. We've got one person that seems to be a little more helpful now. But I just, I just, yep. this weekend I was like, we can't keep pretending this isn't going to hold us up because currently we can't print anything reliably and the features of this bamboo x1c are just like i watched enough videos and reviews and stuff and all the normal 
printer heads are so impressed by it. So it's really not that expensive considering what we make with it. And um, we might get rid of one of the Perusos, I think, that seemingly don't have problems, but seemingly do have problems. I don't know. It's just weird. Mm, how old are those Perusos now? First one's from January, and the second one was July, I want to say. The second one doesn't oh, so really have problems. Fresh. Okay. that we're aware of it prints it does have the same problem with the same dust boot type shift but every other yeah. type of print they are solid so hmm yeah how how old is that model of proof relative to like this new gen of I think it's quite old in? like maybe 18 or mm. 19, 2018 or 19 if i had to guess okay They've yeah, done some like is... incremental upgrades to them which i wasn't really following printer technology back then so the things that are really impressive to me and to people that i guess have been looking at this stuff was this these people that started bamboo labs or it came from dji i guess which made printers and they seem to like have gone all right let's start over and do the things that people have been wanting like there's a yeah. lidar sensor that measures like heights and how the first layers get put down so then it can adjust depending on it does i did get the auto material switcher thingy because it was pretty affordable to add on and the thing i loved about that is it's an enclosure that keeps an airtight seal on the spools so you don't get humidity yeah. constantly into them which is a huge problem with petg it's way faster like crazy fast seems to be better quality mm -hmm. too so i don't know yeah, I'm hoping it solves a few problems for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And what sort of investment was it? I think it's fifteen hundred, basically. Mm. One thousand five hundred with the AMS thing. You can bare cool. bones it to like a thousand, I think. But oh, it can also like another hundred or two hundred dollars in there was to be able to print carbon fiber, which I thought was a steal for that capability. Like. If we want to mm. or need to, maybe start making baby fans out of carbon fiber or other potential parts. It's like pretty good deal. Yeah, yeah. We'll cool. see. Hopefully, it's what it well, says it is. Yeah, yeah. Exciting. Yeah. Oh well, might hold off on purchasing our printer in January. Oh yeah. See how you go with that. Yeah, I've seen. Nothing but raving positive reviews, which is kind of interesting. I, I would guess there's going to be some like some issues coming, but who knows? Sure. Um, mm. Cool. Yeah. How are the um, product sales going? Very very slow. Yeah. Um, yep, slowing down. Slowing down. This December is a lot better than last December. But still a big, big slowdown coming off a, a huge November. Mm -hmm. Yeah, struggling to sort of get anywhere near our targets that we need to hit for break even at the moment. Yeah. And we've really only got a week. Yeah, we close in a week. So pressure's on to sort of do what we can. But it's a weird time of year to be getting on the phone and hassling people. <laughs> yeah. Everyone's Interesting. You know, got too too much going on I feel like but you know maybe that's just an excuse I don't know I'll keep I'll keep trying see see how we go but yeah yeah with this one you're going to do on your customer's machine are you going to mm -hmm. document that yeah. process I don't yeah. exactly that's a good question I, I, I thought about just setting up a camera and just recording the whole thing for my so I could like cut it up if I needed to for Something mm -hmm. I do intend, and I asked them about filming, and they were totally cool with that. So I'm trying to get it all done in one day, which is going to feel like a lot, I yeah. feel like, for the first time. So I'm trying to make an outline and like be able to capture what is helpful to have as like a guide for other people with that machine specification, a little bit different size, as well as like sure. potentially marketing. But yeah. You know, I think it's definitely a marketing opportunity. Like, sure, record a long-form version for yeah. the purposes of a guide. Great to have that resource. But 
from a marketing perspective, I think that's a great opportunity to capture mm -hmm. some moments like just on your phone or whatever. Like, mm. I think because my sense of that product is it would be a bit of a like a mental hurdle to go, right, we're going to change our, oh, how yeah. our tooling works on our machine. So if you can sort of capture some of those moments of that transition and how it works, just like key pivotal moments as part of that process, just quick and mm -hmm. dirty, I feel like that that'd be a great thing to do. Yeah. Um, to kind of let people in to that process a bit. Yeah, I definitely have been so, part of definitely part of my stress about getting it out there still is there's just a lot of variables on all sides, on purchasing, mm -hmm. on installation. The machines have slight variances over time. And so, like, it's hard to tell on my side what's different when I have I don't have experience. That's part of why I want to do it is I don't have experience with this specific model size. And they've changed some stuff. The machines come. So trying to figure out how best to help people do it safely to install yeah. their own and not leave it to... Um, oblique so that they're scared to do it on their own you know like a, how do you have enough for them but not so much that it's like they're just totally trusting that what we give them is going to work you know yeah i see what you mean yep yeah that's a tricky balance huh it's very tricky mm. yeah that's that's one of the things that keeps me up um that i'm gonna forget or miss something or not present it right to people. And originally I was kind of just thinking like we would just make parts and give them to people and they would have to figure it out. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't think that would, it doesn't really fly. Nobody really wants to do that kind of thing on their own. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, the people who do want to do that on their own are you. Like they'll make their own They'll make their own right? version, yeah, for sure. Because exactly. that's part of the part of the process, their process yeah. of sort of explore, exploring that mm. in the same way that I would just, you know, start cutting holes in my table and sinking tools into it. You know, everyone's yep. going to have sort of a different approach if they're in that sort of exploratory make it up space. Yep. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So they're really helpful. I've thought about potentially, because like this one is driving distance. I don't think I... Cool have any like i want to find more variations of the machine to be able to to try different just to see how it is uh, on different ones to have more experiences i thought about flying to go try and install one too for somebody just to kind of get that experience because i don't know just feels really valuable usually the customers are very receptive to you offering to help install it for free so <laughs> Yeah, no, works I think out nicely. D doing a few of those, you're going to learn a lot. But I think yeah, there's a lot of opportunities within that to help communicate yeah. to mm -hmm. your customers as well. Mm. Yeah, How, how's Threadboard coming? Oh, look, I installed some in the gallery. This job that I've oh, done yeah, this yeah. week, new style. So it's not. Yeah, so it's uh, it's not the very first Threadboard that's gone out, but it's kind of the biggest slash closest to home. Yeah, it's um, cool. It's so near the art museum. Yeah, it's in the local town here. And um, we kind of, they approached us because they wanted to refit their little retail space at the front of the gallery, reception and retail. Yep. And they're pretty underfunded. And so they had a little bit of money to put towards this project. Yeah. And I sort of took their budget and said, yeah, we can do something with that, but it's not going to be enough to deliver what I think would be a nice outcome. Sure. So we'll come to the party and we'll sponsor sort of the second half of the project. Nice. For free as product exposure. So mm. if we get sort of creative control over what products we use ah. in your retail space and then it sort of kind of becomes a little unofficial showroom for us. Lots of QR we'll codes. <laughs> we'll sponsor the second half of the project. So, yeah, that's worked out. I mean, it remains to be seen. 
yeah. whether that was worth the investment, but it's a nice, nice space and it looks great with our product in it. So, and it gets, the gallery gets pretty good traffic. So that's very cool. It'd be great to have kit parts and the thread board in there. And, and and because it's so local, it'd be nice for a sort of an R and D perspective. Like yesterday I was in the gallery and like I basically just gave them a box of threadboard accessories and was like some new ones with them as well, like little price tag holders. And so it'll be a really nice sort of R&D opportunity, I think. Yeah. Because I can pop in there and just look at how they're using it and then go away and, you know, yeah. make new things and take them in and try them out. and For sure. Yeah, That's I'm excited nice. about that. That's cool. I think it'll be good. And it'll just be nice to be able to say to customers, hey, if you want to see... X, Y, Z, go to the gallery. That's what I was thinking about primarily is it's a place mm. to like have it on show. Yeah. Because we've we've often had like a little mini showroom at work, but it just just gets filled up with crap, gets dusty. This behind me. All our, yeah, exactly. But worse, all our stuff sort of piles in. You see my um, pile of tripods real, real and camera oh, shit yeah, right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. No, I think it's cool. It's been a good thing. I got to, I made it. The mistake that kept me up almost all night this week actually was a an assumption about a curve. Mm. So, I wrapped their ugly MDF counter in sort of a new design, this ribbed hoop pine thing. And when I did the site measure, I got the laser out and I did quite a careful site measure of the space and drew it all up in Fusion. But I made an assumption about this big curved counter that it was a three-point curve, Ah. a true radius. Because it looked like in the space, it looks, you know, like a big consistent curve. Anyway, machined all these parts for the counter cladding Mm. treatment and got to install, put, put put the curved parts on it. It was just like, so far off someone it was very it was obviously a handmade object someone had handmade it like it was symmetrical (laughs) but when i traced it traced a template put it back into rhino to try and work out what the the curve actually was it went from being a three-point curve to like a nine point curve of various radiuses oh not facet all curved but like i reckon yeah like At least like four different cloud. radiuses kind of <laughs> mashed together. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. So, That's why we don't so do site work. my lesson there. <laughs> that's why we don't do site work. <laughs> yeah, that's why we avoid it. Yeah, oh, um, gosh. But a real lesson in keeping a bit of cardboard or something in the van to like, yeah. if you see a weird feature, to be able to, to get the knife and masking tape out and actually make a physical template. Sure. Like, I'm so CAD-based, I just always jump to, like, perfect circles, perfect squares. I'm, and I've made so many mistakes on site with those sorts of assumptions over the years. I should know better. But there's times when a bit of cardboard and a Sharpie are going to be way better. Even building a wall in my kitchen, doing most <laughs> of all the work myself. I didn't put the floors in on other walls, obviously. But building the cabinets... I, it is so hard for me to go from like being the CNC machinist person, mm. CAD based person to like trying to make stuff work in my own kitchen is like, yeah. <laughs> what do you mean it's not square and like not level and what do you, yeah. what? On that note, I was thinking the person that came out to measure for our countertops use mm. some laser measuring device that then stores it in like a relational Ooh. database type drawing thing. I'm sure they're cool. a few thousand dollars, but I'm sure it's well worth it because then you mm-hmm. can just have a drawing of exactly what you just scanned. That's cool. Super useful. So was it uh, like a point to point laser measure or like like cloud scanny on a tripod? And then they had this little like flags that were reflective that they'd put uh, on yeah. things. And so then he'd turn it, scan that thing. And so I think basically wow. what I was just doing is creating points and then maybe they draw between them later. I'm not sure. Ironically, fancy. they are going to fix it, but we are having our countertops replaced because they did not get it right. 
which made me very confused because he scanned it with a laser. <laughs> yeah. No oh dear. Also used the wrong glue. <laughs> you know, like when you use like walnut glue or like a dark glue for darker woods. It's like they did that on our white countertops so you can see the glue lines inside of them. We are not the people oh. to like make those kind of mistakes with, unfortunately, because like my wife marks up this stuff for contractors to fix it at work. So yeah. We were like, this isn't going to work, guys. <laughs> They've been nice and oh, hard dear. fixing it, but I feel bad about the yeah. waste of that. Hmm. For sure. I think if we did more site work, I'd definitely be very keen on some sort of system like that. Like you could reduce so many errors by having like reliable. A decent site amount of data. those like cloud capture things. But every time I've ever tried to work with those, it's like, how do you, and I've asked those people at shows too, the laser scanner people, how do you deal with the data? Because they're always bragging about mm. how much data they can capture. And I'm like, I don't, what am I doing with Great. 3 million points though? Like, I want a solid model, not a crazy mesh that I can't open. Fusion's great at crazy meshes, you know, handles <laughs> oh, them really well. Wonderful, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mm -hmm. crash them at all and like ruin your project. Oh. <laughs> um, looking at those shoe models Comments. behind me. <laughs> cool. What are you yeah. scampering off to this morning? We're going to run those forks. I have to make great. one kind of one-off part on the mill. We got a pretty decent system set up, but mentally, but I just need to like outline it and make sure that it actually can get done in a reasonable timeline because it's like hours away. Chat, GPT. Please, please make me a schedule for installing ATC pedestals. Try that later. <laughs> cool, man. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll let you go. Yeah. Have a good week. Good luck. You too. Chat soon. Bye. 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 Lovely. Mm, delicious.